This is chapter 11, function operators. And um, so we are going to through what are function operators. So we try to define function operator and define uh, existing function operators. And then uh, uh, we learn how to make uh, your own function operator. In this chapter, as you uh, as it's very clearly stated, uh, we uh, learn how to use function operator. Uh, and this is a case of function factories. So, um, yeah. So we will see a case study about how to download many uh, web pages using a function operator. Uh, in the internet, Googling function operators, like to find some, uh, you know, like inspiration things. Um, and then I found this, uh, this is example from uh, uh, Michael Frank. Here there's a, um, a slide, there, there, there are all the sliders for the slide for, for this, um, uh, for this topic. And he, also talk about uh, R, how to use R with function and everything in more theoretical manner, let's say, just to have an introduction, what are these function operators? So in mathematics, so in, in R, you, if you think about operators, you, you might think about plus, times, or I don't know, even the pipe operators somehow, no? Okay. What is a function operator? Uh, so we um, basically function operators are function that deals within each other applying uh, using an operator. So for example, this F plus G, uh, it's a function operator, okay? Basically does operations uh, within functions. Okay, so let, let's go back to uh, basically R and say that uh, trying to define a function operator a bit and with some uh, finding some similarities. A function operator is a function that takes one or more functions as an input. So, uh, it returns a function as an output. So it takes a function as an input and releases a function as an output. So for this reason, function operators are closely related to function factories. In fact, are particular cases, uh, a particular case, it is a particular case which uses a function as an input. And this is it. Um, it's a bit basically a function uh, which has a function as an input and a function as an output. So in the book for, for this chapter, we use two, two libraries, library per and memorize. And uh, these two libraries uh, provide, allowed you to use some fun already made function operators. Uh, and what are the most common ones? So basically the, the, the mentioned um, as first are uh, two uh, function operators, one for catching errors and one for catching computations. For catching error, we can use uh, from perm safely, the a function and uh, with for catching computation and in this case this function is an example of dynamic programming for example we can use it uh, from the package memorize memorize and um, uh, now we can uh, we have a look at these two um, functions just to um, in the browser 
do it like that. And let's go back to one. So, what, uh, let's have a look at these functions. Any of you as a, does any of you may, maybe have any experience using uh, one of these two functions, like any experience using safely or any experience using memize? Some some um, of the per yes. functions, uh, I think safe, safely I may have used once or twice, but mainly for, for, for learning, not so much for uh, actual practical stuff. Okay. Same year also, I'm used to safely and possibly from the core, but memoirs, I'm not used to memoirs. Okay. Uh, would you like to talk about uh, safely? Maybe um, uh, le let's read the, 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 um, uh, like the, the help pane say, uh, the safely capture side effect. So it's uh, like, safe to use we have already mentioned um, in other chapters and this function wrap functions so that instead of generating side effects to printed output uh, messages warnings and error they return enhanced output so they are all adverbs because they modify the action of a verb a function um in practice so we can use this safely if we have a look at the um, at the chapter where there's a nice um, um, example we can see that uh, if we if we um Can you see the? Can you see my internet? Yeah, it looks yes. like uh, you're not reaching the page for some reason. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back here and say and have a look at the uh, at the uh, L page, and he said. Basically, it safely is a wrapped function and uh, instead returns a list of components, uh, result and error, if an error occurs. An error is an error object and result as a default value otherwise. So, um, for example, if I want to make a log, okay, and I use safely, this is the, the straightforward example that I was looking uh, when I, um, I was reading this uh, uh, page. So if I want to make a log, no? okay. the, the logarithm function uh, allows for uh, numbers, not uh, characters, for example. If I use safely log, when, uh, and I make this as a function, when I use a character, it releases an error. So it advised me that I'm not, uh, let's, let's have a look at this. Uh, okay, if I make this safe log, uh, safe log here, okay. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, function operator that already done, made, because inside it's a function. So the input will be a function. Am I saying right? So I, if I use safe log 10, I have a result and not an error. If I use safe log A, I have null as a result and it releases an error. So it's a simple error because not numeric argument. Would you like to share your experience using safely? Maybe that would be, uh, even if you want to share, if you have an example or anything 
that you think it might be useful to understand it a bit. Um, or let's just uh, dig a bit more on examples. What do you think? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have any examples myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let, let's. Uh, so this is um, uh, safely from Perl is for catching errors. And uh, then there is memoirs for catching computation. And actually, it's like uh, it, it, this. This this one here is used for um, uh, memorizing uh, a part of a code inside a function. So uh, basically, it says yeah. Um, basically it creates a memoized uh, copy of the function so um, uh, it saves the answer uh, in case uh, uh, of a new invocation and um, so it has, has allows for a function as an input and um, you can cache some values in, in case, and then there are other arguments uh, for omitting arguments. And it says that there are two main ways to use memoize function. Um, say that you wish to memoize GLM, for example. Okay, the result of GLM, I believe. So, which is the start package. Then you could use uh, like memize GLM, or you can use memize start GLM. Okay. So the first form has the advantage that you still have easy access to both the memize and the original function. And so let's see an example. Yeah, if I do, uh, I have a function A. Okay, let's take this first. I have this uh, function A which is uh, like a function that uh, run a uniform uh, certain number of numbers okay, of a certain length. So mem a using memize the a. Okay, yeah. It's a, uh, a function Uh, um, basically function memorized. The function is, has been memorized. So now I replicate five time A and replicate five time mem A. Okay, so under some uh, conditions, so now we can see it. For example, that he said, catching computation. Um, basically, th this function uh, will remember previous input and return cached results. Okay. So these are examples of function operators. And um, for example, the, a way to, to use this function is to save time. So for example, if I memorize uh, a function, the, the very next, oops, the very next time I use it, it runs faster because it cached the, uh, the computation. 
So for example, if I use, uh, like I want to calculate the Fibonacci um, sequence, and I, made, I make a function that says, uh, if n is less than two, return one, if, uh, and then uh, calculate this different, this uh, sequence this way, like n minus two plus n minus one. So I check with the system time. I run it the first time with a number, with a, a length of numbers, 23 numbers. So it says uh, mm, that uh, um, it takes some time, okay, to run. If I run the second time, uh, again, takes some times. If I use memice here, just as the same, so in the function, just uh, I wrap the function with memice, uh, it runs uh, faster. And then even the second time I call it changing number. So this is an example of dynamic programming. So all, all of the, the, this first two, uh, where is this? Um, this first two are examples of uh, function operators which are already uh, made. Okay, there, there are more. Okay, what, what um, I, I put this one, with, because I, I, that was nice. So I need a function operator. What about something that, uh, was already made. Okay, so Perl comes with three other function operators in uh, uh, which are they very similar uh, somehow. And so quietly, it's quite, quite uh, well known function that you can use, uh, for example, when you load a package to turn out some uh, output. Possibly, I haven't uh, actually used it but uh, it returns uh, value and it provides no way to tell uh, if an error occurred or not, but uh, uh, it, it returns as default, as default a value when there's an error. And then there is this auto browser as examples of function operators, okay? Which automatically execute browser search so you can like use the browser inside the function when there's an error for example so these are uh, if we go back to the book uh, and see that, that there were some some exercises uh, even the nice uh, um, like read the uh, explanation for possibly and safely. And, but th there is this one, which is nice. These are provide a function operator in the form of vectorized. What does it do? When might you use it? Do you know this function maybe? It's a scalar function and, um, create a function wrapper. For example, you can use a function inside. So this is a function operator. It's a function that uh, allows for a function as an input and releases a function as an output. So the argument uh, in the vect uh, vectorize, for example, if I want to vectorize uh, some replications, uh, I can do it uh, setting uh, the number of times. For example, I want to this thing to be vectorized. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know about others, Federica, but uh, um, kind of listening listening, well, actually reading this chapter and listening to you also, I, I, I kind of am still a little bit puzzled by the definition of a functional operator that it releases a, you know, at least 
you know, by Hadley's book, you know, he, his claim is that it releases a function. It almost seems like I would almost define it differently in the sense that it's a function that takes as an argument a function and has the effect of kind of changing the output or the side effects of that function. Um, Cause I, I, it's not, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it releases a function exactly. Um, yeah. In the same sense of like the function, like the functional factory, like that we saw last week, clearly, clearly did right. So uh, it was a function that had the that constructed other functions in the in the global environment. Here, it seems like these, the, you know, these function operators are really just kind of modifying the behavior of of functions that they take as a, a as as an argument. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what others think. I think for my own and what may I saw from the book is that functional operator will always take a function as input and it, it will also return a function as output. I think I also look at the slide of previous cohorts, it's still the same. It's a function takes function input, it also returns a function as output. Yeah. Basically, the, the, the very, very first example in the, in the chapter is this chatty function. And uh, for example, uh, this chatty, the force, we, we use the force uh, in, in, in the other chapter, no? Just to make sure that uh, the, the computation uh, works without in, being influenced of any changes in, in the environment. Uh, so this chatty function has been made to uh, and make you understand uh, what is a function operator, and uh, then it it is a function itself, and then it is used inside a function, and allows for an input which is a function. Um, Yeah, it's a type of function factory. So, but anyway, let, let's have a look at the case study, uh, which is nice as well. So here we want to like download uh, some URL uh, pages. So we set uh, a URL and we list some of the URL that we want to download and we give them a name. And then we set the path, for example. So uh, we, we uh, download them in a temporary directory and their names are from the URL um, that we had just created and they are type HMS. So here we use walk to. So this is uh, the example. So we use a function that allows for functions as an input and uh, uh, it is a function itself. So, yeah. So this is the, the first example using work to. So you cannot find, if you run this example, you cannot find uh, what you downloaded because it is, it, it is in a temporary directory. So my question is, where is the temporary directory? Do you know that? So, because I, I wanted to see the list. So I made the list and then ask walk to, uh, uh, set up the, the URL and the path and then download the files quietly. Okay, so then I make a function operator myself, a new one, not any pre-made. Uh, and this, uh, the, so they, they made this uh, delay by for allowing some uh, like uh, second before downloading the second uh, uh, the second page HTML page. So this is a function operator. It's a function uh, which 
as a function inside and allows for function as an input. So what do I do with this? Okay, first I check uh, how long it takes if I run with a uniform. And then I walk within the path and then delay the download file as, as, as the same as before. But uh, this, this time um, I set the uh, download, I've wrapped the download file uh, inside the delay by operator function uh, setting uh, one second before to download the, the, the second uh, uh, HTML page. Have you got any questions? Maybe. No, so this is uh, this is it for the chapter. So, yeah. Okay, like for the HTML page, the top, the first functional operator. If it, if I put the PDF, will it work? The that the books, the two book that we downloaded with, uh, they work. I think the default was the HTML. Okay, and I, I can't hear you. So I uh, I hear you like breaking your your voice breaking okay. uh, yeah it's just go to the top no not the book is the notes the notes not a okay so this is the case study okay yes, from, yes, yes. from the book so we have set the url uh, that we want to download we set the path where we want the, this URL to be downloaded to. And then we use walk. No, I understand. What I'm asking is the dot HTML, the output yeah. style. If the default we said it should be HTML. What about if I need PDF? I just said dot PDF is it okay that way? If you do a PDF, that yes. That that is not a PDF because this is an HTML page. Okay. So you can you can maybe have a, a a list of files of PDFs in your repo or in GitHub, for example. And then you might want to call them like PDFs and uh, list them as a name. There is, there is a function that grabs. Uh, uh, the files inside a folder in your R or in your GitHub, then you have a list of PDFs. At that point, you can set the path as a, in a temporary directory. Maybe you want to download it from, um, from a repo to another repo, from a folder to another folder. So like moving files, then you can set the path, not set, in a temporary directory, you can um, set a directory that you may the the needed one, and then uh, the names will be PDFs as we said, and then you 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 specify the the type of bit of files that you are uh, that you want to to move, download, or whatever. Yeah, because these are HTML. If I'm not saying <laughs> anything <laughs> wrong, these are HMS. So then walk, walk to walk. It's walking you through grabbing these files, downloading them, and putting them into a new directory, a specified directory. But then if you search for them, if you run this code, if you search for them, you don't find it because they are in a temporary directory. So where are they? Let, let's copy this.
Okay, I set my URL. And if I have a look at that, I have two for now. I can add more. Then I set the, the path, which is in a temporary directory. So I want written like that, like the path. This is my path, var folder. So this is the folder, my temporary folder in my computer. Okay, if I do, this is in my computer. If I search, tell me if you can see my search box. Can you see it? Yes, yes. So now, what is function reader? Where are they? I cannot find. So if I search for this bit here, maybe. Okay, I found something. Maybe this this folder. So now we are looking at temporary directory, which is this temporary directory in my uh, Mac. This is the folder, which is this one here, RT temp. R temp, okay, in R temp. So this is R temp T folder in this one things here. And then from these things and in folders in bar and private. So this is hidden folder. So you cannot find it. But well, anyway, uh, then we take this path and, uh, and put it inside a, 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 an operator function. And this is a function, isn't it? Yeah, from utils. Download files from the internet. Download files from the internet. So I use work to uh, work to still from Pern. Okay. Okay, now. Apparently is downloading the the files. Okay, where are they? My question is. Some some temporary directory. In the same temporary directory. Maybe I, it might be that each invocation of uh, temptier creates a new uh, uh, random directory. I'm not I'm not sure. Should be again in this in this in this uh, folder. That that's the part. Of the, ah, okay. Okay. So this is the folder. Where where is it? Not there. Where are they? Um. Uh, this is something that I haven't. So. Uh, I think it's the HTML I, files that are that appeared. Just below I the saw, folder that you I have saw, in the middle yeah. pane. Yes. Up here. Where um, they appear? So, so if so if you go back to your uh, file browser, I, I think it's the uh, if you look at the middle pane. Just um, go down. Just go yeah, down. The, the, exactly the folder that's highlighted. Yeah. I think those are the files contained. Yes. Within. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. Here they are. Oh, okay. Why are not the, so they are outside the folder? Okay. Okay, this, this is not, uh, so this is extra, but um, okay. 
thank you. <laughs> I was looking at this one here and not uh, at the other. But, um, maybe because I downloaded more, the, more than one. So I have a double copy, but they are, are they different? So this is, a, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, let, let, let's go forward. Uh, um, going back to here. So this is the first uh, uh, the, the first um, things for creating um, uh, own operator and then use it for downloading uh, many HML files. So the things uh, is that uh, um, we add this delay by function um, on made inside the work. Now we wrap the download file with delay by. So this, this extra function, so a function with inside a function and uh, another function. Yeah. So this does the same things just that between the two HML files, there will be a second. And uh, so this is done like this. Then uh, uh, we can, we, we might want to add a dot. So here is the same uh, uh, discussion that we had uh, uh, for the previous chapter. So we force, to make sure that in the environment, uh, the function, the, the operators inside the function doesn't get confused. So I is start from zero and always will be zero. And then we make sure that uh, uh, there is an increment of one each time. And then uh, if the, um, uh, so this is the module. So if we have zero, so the, the, the values can be like, I don't know. But anyway, we add, we concatenate with a dot. So in case I can, can you, and then we use any function. Do you like to add anything about it, maybe? So uh, in, it, with this function, we add the dot, and then we run again walk, this time walk and not walk two, uh, dot every uh, 10. Uh, we run a uniform, so every 10 times there is a dot. And then again, we do the same thing, but we walk too, so we can use an extra function. And we use dot every delay by the long file. And so on and so forth. So this is, uh, this is the chapter. Okay, so I think we need to meditate a bit about these functions. <laughs> a, yeah, thank you. I have a little bit more time to uh, focus on these functions. All right, um, thank you very much and uh, see you next week. If you haven't got any questions, anything to share. Do we have someone to present? Uh, right. Mm. Not yet, it seems. For next week. Next week, uh, apparently not. Base types. So 
we can even uh, i don't know uh does any of you like to present the chapter maybe um and are that will be uh are we doing base types and s3 whatever do you think it's uh because um, or maybe someone else can do S3. So you do base type and then someone else do S3, does S S3 and then you do R6, maybe. Yeah, if I'm, you, yeah. Oh, I'm good with whatever. Yeah. Um, maybe uh we we do base type and do some questions because uh we don't know how to do the things <laughs> if it's too short i don't know oh uh just just to do just let us know what what do you think is um the most suitable things to do okay yeah to catch up on slack okay great Thank you everyone and uh, thank you for attending this session and see you next week. Bye bye, bye. bye. see you next bye. week.